Thanks a lot. Uh, so good morning, everyone. Thanks a lot for uh, this, this invitation uh, to the organizers. So I apologize for my late uh, arrival. Uh, okay, so unlike the other uh, lecturers, I have prepared some slides. Uh, so Kuru is worried that this is not a, a good idea, but uh, okay, I, I, I promise that if it does not work, then I will uh, move to the blackboard, but still uh, we, we tried. And uh, you can download now these slides from my homepage. So if you want to have them, uh, uh, you're free to, to search for my name and um, uh, download uh, this this file. So it's very good that uh, uh, Ilya presented you uh, a bit uh, part of the big picture. So he's going to continue in the next uh, so lecture. So you will see I have kind of prepared a, a different uh, uh, style for my course. Uh, again, so maybe Kuroshi is worried, but uh, we'll see. Uh, so, in fact, uh, sorry, I I want to discuss in particular the problem of uh, constructing uh, some of the relevant objects in rough path and in the regularity structure. Um, okay, you, you will see it, it's a, a very vast uh, and, and difficult uh, 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 topic, so it is very hard to to explain everything. Uh, so I will focus on a few points, which uh, I believe are, are particularly uh, interesting. Uh, again, I I had to make some choices, and uh, um, I. Still I have a relatively precise plan for the first three lectures, so maybe in the fourth lecture I can, uh, uh, how do you say, discuss some, something that I, I did not discuss <laughs> in the first uh, three. Again, we, we'll see. You, you, it's really not, uh, not uh, uh, easy to explain uh, all this because there are so many details, etc. So again, I, I, I decide to start with the Sewi lemma, which is uh, relatively simple and uh, it serves as an introduction. Then uh, uh, in the second lecture, which is actually this morning, I have the reconstruction theorem. Then the Schauder estimates will be tomorrow. And uh, again, in the fourth lecture, I guess I will discuss products and equations, but maybe it will be more useful to, to say something different. So I'm open to, to modify my plan if uh, there is some feedback uh, or if you, again, if, if Kurushi is very disappointed. Uh, uh, okay, so le let's start. So lecture one, the, the Sewi lemma. So, uh, the problem is actually very, very uh, basic. Now, you have two functions, f and g, and uh, uh, they are supposed to be continuous, say, but not really, not necessarily uh, differentiable. So, you still want to define uh, an integral of f multiplied by g dot, so the derivative of g. Uh, but you would like to do that when g is not necessarily differentiable. Actually, uh, if f is, is differentiable, then you can integrate by parts. So you assume both uh, to be non necessarily differentiable. And in fact, uh, the motivation comes from probability. Uh, for example, when g is a, is a Brannan motion, and f may be a function of a Brannan motion. Um, and in fact, this is an example of a more general problem which we will discuss uh, uh, later. So given a, a distribution, I will define more precisely what a distribution is uh, later in the second lecture. But anyway, uh, for example, the derivative of a continuous function 
uh, is a good example of a, of a distribution, something which is not necessarily defined as a, as a function, and a, a non-smooth function f. So how can we define their product, uh, which would be a new distribution f uh, uh, g dot? Okay. Now, if g is uh, actually of class C1, so then this can be defined, uh, no problem. And now let's uh, look at this uh, uh, object, so the integral from zero to t, I, I give it a name, i t. Then I consider another uh, function of two uh, parameters, r s t, r r r s t which is i t minus i s minus f s times g t minus g s. Now, if you write the gt minus gs as the integral from s to t of g dot r dr, then you can uh, uh, factorize uh, g dot r uh, with the i, and you obtain this expression. And uh, since uh, g dot now is a continuous function, you, you see easily that this is small when t and s are, are, are close to each other. Actually, it's really small. It's uh, smaller than uh, uh, t minus s. Okay. Then uh, I can rewrite this by saying that i t minus i s is uh, uh, this product plus r s t, and r s t has this nice property of being uh, very small. Now, in fact, what is interesting is that these uh, properties. Note, note that I don't have the derivative of g anymore in, in this line. Okay, but still, these uh, these properties characterize the pair i r. So given f and g, uh, I have at most one pair i r. Since if you have uh, two possible choices, then you take the difference uh, uh, between i one and i two. And you realize that uh, so this difference has to be very small. Uh, you divide by t minus s. You let uh, s go to t. So you realize that uh, this difference has a, a zero derivative. Therefore, it is constant. And since it is zero, it's zero. It is it is zero. And therefore, r is also uh, uniquely de determined. Okay. So this line is a, a weak formulation weak in the sense, uh, uh, like uh, the analysts uh, say, uh, you, you, you require less on your uh, object, but still you, you retain a, 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 an interesting construction, interesting information. So uh, I repeat, this line characterizes this function, which is the, uh, the, the integral from zero to t, without explicitly mentioning uh, the derivative uh, of g. Okay, so this looks like a, a promising uh, way of approaching at least a, a definition of this object, of this object wh when g is not necessarily differentiable. Okay. So uh, this is well. I'm just repeating uh, the same. Okay, the two first lines are repetition. Now let us notice another. Interesting property, if I compute RST minus RSU minus RUT, okay, and I use this uh, formula, so then I disappears, okay, because IT minus IS uh, minus uh, et cetera, you, you see that uh, uh, everything simplifies. And then you just uh, uh, get a, a quantity which depends on F and G. So, there is a, an expression uh, where R appears, where F and G appear, but I has, di has disappeared, okay? So in fact, uh, um, we can see that we have, again, uh, G, so the derivative of G does not appear. Uh, the existence of I satisfying uh, this in fact, turns out to be equivalent to the existence of R satisfying this. 
and if you have R, you have I. Uh, okay. So this uh, suggests the definition of the following object. So you have uh, so the, the simplex. Uh, um, no, it's, it's not the simplex. How it is called? So it's the n n tuples of of uh, times which are ordered. Uh, and then you have the continuous functions of this uh, compact set, okay? And you have two op operators, so uh, which have the same name, but act, act on different spaces. So delta from C1 to C2. To C2. So C1 is just uh, the continuous functions of one uh, variable. Uh, so given I from zero T to R, the i, the delta i is a function of two uh, parameters. It's uh, the increment. And uh, uh, delta from C2 to C3, so if you have a function of two parameters, then you get a function of three parameters, uh, which is given by, by this. Okay, so you remember uh, i t minus s appear uh, here, and uh, uh, the delta actually of r appears here, okay? So it turns out that we have two nice and, and simple properties. So first, if you compose in the, in the only possible way the two op delta operators, you get zero. And or I already said this when I mentioned that I will disappear uh, from this uh, uh, formula. And the second property is that if uh, G in C2 has a, a zero delta, then G is the delta of a F with F in C1. So it's, it's very simple. So in particular, uh, these operators form an exact uh, co-chain complex. Okay, so there is a well-known terminology for, for this. Okay. Um, now, if we go back to our definition of an integral, uh, we see that, so we are looking for i in C1, uh, which is zero at zero, and such that its delta is equal to f s g t minus g s plus small uh, o of t minus s. And we said that this is equivalent to the existence of R in C2, such that uh, delta R uh, satisfies this, and uh, RST is uh, small o of uh, t minus s. So we can call I uh, the integral, AST equal to Fs times gt minus gs, uh, the germ, and R the remainder. Okay, so um, again, the game here is to take a germ and find the, 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 the pair i, r, uh, which uh, satisfy, uh, satisfies uh, the, the two properties uh, above, okay? Or some generalization of, uh, of these properties. Okay, now uh, let us introduce another notation. So you take gamma positive and uh, uh, for H, which is a function of now N times, uh, you consider this um, semi, uh, well, uh, what is this? Is, this, is it a norm now? Uh, it may be a norm. So it, it is the supremum of this uh, quotient, okay? Remember that the, the times are ordered here. So this is the distance between the smallest and, and the, the biggest one. And uh, you uh, divide the, the absolute value of H by this uh, quantity, okay? So H gamma is finite if and only if uh, H is essentially small uh, when all times are, are close, okay? And, uh, uh, it has to be small uh, uh, in, in, a, in a controlled way. So this depends on, on gamma. OK. 
Okay? So now the, the theory lemma, which uh, uh, is the, the main topic of this first lecture, is the following theorem. It has been proved uh, by uh, Massimiliano Gubinelli and uh, by Friel de la Pradel, so independent uh, of each other. Now, for gamma greater than one, there exists a unique map, lambda. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, wh what does this mean? So, you take a function of three times, okay, which is in this space uh, C gamma, and which must be the delta of some function of two times. Okay, so this is the, the domain of, of, of the map. And uh, you obtain a function of, of two uh, times uh, with this uh, gamma uh, uh, property such that okay, the delta of lambda b is b for all such uh, possible uh, b. Okay? So uh, uh, if you see it uh, for the first time, maybe it's uh, kind of obscure, but I'm going to try to explain why this is re relevant to what we were saying. Um, so again, it is a kind of right inverse for this uh, delta uh, map, okay? So the, the, the delta map from C2 to C3, um, we, we said that it is not really injective, um, so it cannot really be I I invertible. But you can have a, a right inverse in this sense, so you, you can have a map from uh, this space to, to C2 gamma uh, with, with this property. And the, the crucial point is that you obtain uh, an object here, okay? So with, with the gamma here, because without the gamma, uh, it would be easy. So you see, without the gamma, it is trivial because you are in the image of delta. So you know that there is some function here such that the delta is your B. But you, you don't know uh, that uh, this has the, the gamma property, which is uh, listed as here. So the, the serial lemma te is telling you that you can choose uh, one uh, function uh, in C2 with the gamma uh, property, such that uh, uh, the delta of what you chose uh, is your starting uh, object here. Okay. So moreover, this map, lambda, which is called the semi uh, map, has this, uh, it's linear and it is continuous, uh, if you consider, consider these norms, with an explicit uh, um, constant. Of course, so this is the, the norm in, in C2 gamma, and this is the norm in C3 gamma, okay? But, right? So uh, again, this is a map which allows you to choose uh, a uh, representative uh, among all possible uh, functions of, of two times we, we, whose delta is B. So you can choose one which is in the good uh, analytical space. I try to go on. So uh, if you get this, so then uh, so suppose you have, uh, so, uh, don't, don't forget gamma was supposed to be greater than one. So for, for example, I write gamma as one plus kappa with kappa positive. So consider a germ A, which is now a, a function of two variables, such that the delta A is in this space. So uh, it has this uh, smallness property at level one plus kappa. Then you define R as minus lambda of, of delta A. And then, so it turns out that you can write AST as uh, the increment of some function I minus RST. And RST is in, in, has this property because lambda uh, goes in the space of C2 one plus kappa, okay? So this is a analytical uh, uh, property. And then if you consider this Riemann sum, 
uh, you have a telescopic sum uh, at the level of the eyes. And uh, you see that this sum is bounded by T times, uh, sorry, P is a, is a partition you remember, so this is a usual notation of uh, uh, the mesh of, of a partition. So you obtain something which goes to zero when, when the, the mesh of the partition goes to zero. Okay, so in other words, the, your function IT is the limit of Riemann sums of your, of your germ. So exactly as for the Riemann uh, integral, but in a situation which is uh, uh, more, more general. So in a sense, this is part of the, of the theorem, of the same uh, lemma that from, from the, the sewing map, you can recover existence of, of a function i, which is the limit of your uh, Riemann sums from your germ. And note that you have the good property that we were uh, desiring, so that t so RST is uh, a small o of t minus s. Okay, so this is t minus s to the one plus cap. So without uh, assuming, uh, okay, this I, I have to wait for a second, but we are not assuming g to be differentiable and uh, uh, still we can do something interesting. So uh, note that uh, this is a, a, an argument for existence. Uh, yeah. Um, So in, in, this is, uh, okay, the, the dyadic uh, approximation. So if you consider uh, a partition of this uh, uh, form, okay, then there is a nice computation. You write I n as uh, a Riemann sum over these uh, uh, dyadic uh, uh, times. And you can see that I n t minus I n plus one t uh, can be written like that, where you see the delta a which appears, and by your assumption, so this delta a will be smaller than two to the minus n gamma minus one, and you see the gamma minus one, uh, so the, the condition gamma greater than one appears uh, very clearly also here, uh, as soon as uh, this is true, the series is summable and, and you obtain uh, uh, this convergence. Bruce, how, how am I doing? So, uh, okay, great, thank you. <laughs> if Kurush is happy, then uh, I'm happy. Um, now, let us give immediately an application which uh, uh, explains uh, that indeed this partly solves our uh, original question. So if you have two standard holder uh, functions, okay, uh, with exponents alpha and beta with alpha plus beta greater than one, so gamma will be alpha plus beta, then there exists a unique pair IR in C beta times C2 alpha plus beta, such that you have the, now, now you, you recognize uh, this, uh, um, expression, and of course, so the condition R in C2 alpha plus beta means that R indeed uh, is a small o of S minus T, because it is bounded by S minus T to the alpha plus beta, which is greater than one. And so this is what actually Ilya also mentioned. Uh, uh, so he even treated the the case in higher dimensions. So for the moment here, we are in one dimension. And uh, this map now from C alpha times C beta to I, which is in C beta, uh, this I did not mention before, but in this setting, you can also uh, obtain that the function I is uh, beta holder, is a continuous extension of the standard map, okay, from C1 times C1 to, to C1, uh, which is the, the 
integral of the product f of f g dot. And the proof uh, at this point is just one line, so you define uh, this germ, uh, its delta is uh, an explicit uh, expression where you have a product of the two increments of f and g, and uh, so the the c alpha alpha plus beta three norm of this is very simple. It's it's bounded by the uh, the, the product of the two norms of f and of the semi norm the Hölder semi norms of f and g in uh, uh, C alpha and C beta, respectively. So you can apply the, the machinery of the semi-lemma and obtain, so R, uh, well, uh, sorry, I, I wrote it, uh, where did I write it? Here, okay? So A is what we wrote, R is minus lambda of, of delta A, and then uh, uh, I is, uh, is A plus R and uh, everything works. So the, the delta of i is a plus y. Okay, so this this is very good. Uh, unfortunately, did I uh, write this? No. So um, unfortunately, uh, this is good, but it does not really cover uh, stochastic integration because in that case you have to go below, um, say, uh, okay, sorry, suppose that alpha and beta are equal so this condition is two alpha greater than one. And then uh, this does not cover a burden motion for which alpha is, is uh, less than one half. And uh, uh, that's where rough paths enter, enter the game. But, so uh, today I'm not really going in, in, in that direction. So I want to uh, tell you something uh, different, although related. So in fact, uh, until uh, recently, the semi lemma had this rest restriction of gamma greater, strictly greater than one. Uh, and uh, so the case of gamma less or equal to one had not been uh, uh, treated. So le let's discuss this because I, th I think it's interesting. So the situation is clearly different. So for example, the proof of uniqueness breaks down. So uh, uh, let me go back. The proof of uniqueness was uh, here, okay? So the uniqueness is based on the fact that here you have small o of t minus s. I said you divide by t minus s, uh, the limit is zero. But if now you have t minus, t minus s to the gamma and gamma is less than one, uh, even less or equal than one, you divide by t minus s and uh, you don't know what happens, so you don't have zero as a limit. Maybe you have a constant, maybe you have uh, no limit at all. So uniqueness is actually clearly false. Uh, why? So this is explained here. If you have one R which has your good properties, actually you can modify your R uh, by summing the increment of any C gamma one function, so any Hölder function of, of uh, exponent gamma, and uh, this still have this still has the, the good properties you you wanted, and, and you didn't change the delta because the delta of the delta is zero. So uniqueness is clearly false, and therefore the sewing map cannot be uniquely determined for gamma less or equal to one. So uh, it was very important here that there exists a unique okay, map. Uh, moreover, the Riemann sums in general do not converge. So you, you can uh, build some example where this uh, just fails to, to converge. So therefore, for gamma less or equal to one, uniqueness is false and existence is at, at least uh, dubious. Um, yeah, so uh, then in fact, quite recently, so uh, motivated by the reconstruction theorem and what I'm going to explain in the, in the, in the next lecture, 
So together with uh, Luca uh, Bru, uh, so we, we realized that there is essentially a, a statement uh, of the theory lemma also for gamma less or equal to one, which is the following. So for gamma less or equal to one, there exists a non-unique, uh, but still a relatively nice uh, map, so linear and actually continuous, I'm going to tell you in a second, which has the same uh, property. Okay, so you, you go from this space to this space. Now gamma is less or equal to one, but everything is well defined. Uh, which is again a, a right inverse of the delta on the on the good space, and uh, so for gamma strictly le less than one, the sewing map is is continued in the in the correct uh, norms. Okay, for gamma equal to one, uh, the statement is slightly different. Uh, you don't obtain. Uh, just T minus S here below, but you obtain, uh, why does the, the, the image oscillate? There are earthquakes in, in Vienna, no, I don't think so. Uh, so you have a log correction here. Okay, we, we you have to, to live with that. Actually, this is the reason why very often in, in rough paths, uh, uh, theory, you see this uh, uh, constraint uh, on the exponent alpha, which sh should not be uh, one over an integer. Okay, so one over alpha is never can cannot be an integer in general, and the reason is that if it is an integer, then you get a log uh, in your formula, and uh, uh, the formula is, is less uh, nice. So let me so stress the fact that the sewing map is different uh, in this setting from the sewing map for gamma greater than one. So in some sense, you have a single sewing map for gra gamma greater than one, which works for every gamma, and you have another single um, map uh, for gamma less or equal than one. And uh, okay, we call both lambda, uh, although they are different, but uh, I don't know. Usually, it's clear that uh, uh, which one you are using, and th the construction is also based on a, on a dyadic argument, but it, it is different. So, um, uh, in a sense, <laughs> you have uh, some estimate with a series which converges, but you have one minus gamma times n instead of gamma minus one times n. So, uh, okay, it's not really uh, an explanation, but. Uh, uh, this is something which comes back, uh, uh, okay, I will try to make some comments in a second about that. Um, yeah, okay, applications to Rafa. So once again, uh, I, I could have st stated, the, so one can state therefore the semi lemma for any positive gamma uh, by saying that uh, you always have, sorry, such a, a, a lambda. Uh, well, actually, one has, uh, one has to uh, single out the case gamma equal to one. So actually, uh, then that's, that's wrong, okay? For gamma equal to one, you, you don't really fall into this, this space. You have to... to put the, the log correction in the definition. So, well, sorry about that. So anyway, uh, you have this transition at gamma equal to one, uh, and you have uniqueness for gamma greater than one, and non-uniqueness for gamma less than one. Okay. I insist, it's not that you don't know about uniqueness. You know that it is not unique, but still you know that you can construct uh, a map, which is actually good. So we are perhaps used to think that when things are non-canonical, uh, non-unique, they are they are non-continuous. They are badly behaved. So this this one is very well behaved. Uh, it is just non-unique and, and, and non-canonical, but it exists, and you can use it. So how can you use uh, this? So let me 
discuss applications to rough paths. So maybe you don't know rough path. Uh, I don't blame you for, for that. Um, at the same time, I do not necessarily want to define all, all details, so I try to give you an example of what a, a rough path could be. So that has discussed the case of re weakly geometric rough path in RD. So here I should have quoted the Terry Lyons. So he introduced, uh, he invented the rough path, and uh, actually his first uh, setting was this one, was uh, the geometric uh, one, which is relatively simple. So in this uh, setting, you, you need the following uh, ingredients. So you have a parameter alpha in zero one, which is some kind of, say, Hölder exponent, and you have this associated integer, uh, integer part of one over alpha. You remember I said, usually you don't want one over alpha to be a, an integer, and so it's not really written here, but you, you can assume that and, and consider uh, the, the integer part, and you call that n. So then you need, uh, so you are in dimension d, uh, then you have this set, of um, uh, words, essentially. You have words from the alphabet uh, uh, 1D, okay? And you associate to each word a degree, which is simply the number of uh, letters in, in, in the word, okay? And then you need a family of, of functions which are indexed by, by words which are functions of two parameters, such that, so in fact, uh, uh, for a word of, of degree n, your function is in C2 alpha n. Okay, so it, it's, it is small when T and S are, are close, and it is small at uh, uh, level, so alpha n. And uh, you have this algebraic identity, um, which is called the chain identity, and which looks like, like that. So your delta, now this is a function of three uh, variables. Now this is a, a sum of products. So you're splitting your, your, wo your word in, in two, two subwords, so the, the beginning and the end. And so you, you apply x s u to the, the beginning and x u t to the end. Okay, if you have never seen this, you may think it's completely arbitrary, uh, but uh, it turns out that you can do plenty of uh, nice uh, things with, with that, uh, including, uh, uh, yeah, this, equations that Ilya was, was mentioning uh, in his uh, lecture the, the, this morning. Uh, yes, please. Thank you very much. I'm hiding this uh, under the carpet. Uh, this is an additional uh, assumption that you, you may want, but at this level it's not really necessary, so I consider the chain identity to be more um, essential, okay? Yes, you can have also an additional uh, algebraic uh, uh, property, but uh, uh, actually, you see, this is especially because uh, uh, the shuffle product is more complicated to introduce than <laughs> the concatenation co-product, so yeah. Since Kurushu was worried, I prefer to be uh, so more si si so si as simple as possible in this first uh, lecture. But so indeed, there is more. There would be more to say here. Uh, okay. Now I put these uh, um, two essential requirements uh, here. And you see, in particular, for all tau in this uh, uh, set of, of words, the delta belongs to C3 now alpha uh, degree of tau. 
because, again, sorry, no, it's, it's here. Simply by the, so the, by the chain identity, so you, you, you bound this delta by the sum of the product of the absolute values. So by the first uh, um, constraint, so this is bounded by u minus s to the alpha k. Uh, the second one is bounded by t minus u to the alpha uh, degree of t minus k. And uh, this sum is bounded by uh, constant maybe times t minus s to the alpha times degree of tau. Um, yeah, sorry. Just to be very pedagogical, so um, here, what you're doing is the following. Uh, I hope this is visible. You're writing A to some power, say, I don't know, X times B to some power Y, okay, where everything here is, is a no negative or, or even positive. Okay, and then you are bounding this by a plus b to the x times a plus b to the y, okay, which is equal to a plus b to the x plus y. Okay, so it, it's really simple, but uh, maybe it's useful to stress this. I'm using indeed that uh, here these quantities are are non-negative and uh, therefore I can use this small trick, okay? Good, now, the, the point is, do such objects exist? Okay, so you remember I said at the beginning, you want to construct something, you, just, you don't just want to uh, list okay, definitions, theorems, and, and properties, you want to check that uh, you, you are discussing uh, something which is not the, the empty set. And this is not trivial, so um, I have tried to summarize this uh, non-trivial problem in the following uh, extension uh, problem. So suppose you have k, which is an integer, and so suppose you, you have constructed your functions uh, for words up to level uh, k. Okay, and now you want to add a new, fun uh, yeah, a new function for a, a new word of level k plus one. And of course you want uh, both these uh, constraints to be, to be satisfied. Is that possible? So you have, do you have existence? Do you have uniqueness? Do you have control of what you're, you're doing? Uh, you, you see? So again, you, you see perhaps the, the connection with the serving lemma. So you want to, in a sense to invert the delta because what you have on the right hand side since k is between one and uh, okay, in this case, I'm sorry, uh, maybe it would have been better to put here n, uh, here n plus one, okay, I'm sorry. So what I'm saying is that the delta uh, considers only on the right-hand side elements with a uh, degree which is strictly uh, smaller than uh, the one on the left. So you can think of a recurrent uh, so a recurrence construction, but you, you, you need to invert uh, uh, the delta in such a way that you fall in the good uh, analytic uh, constraint. Okay, so this is exactly the, the, the point of the serving lemma. So now let's, let us solve the, the extension problem. So if K is after, so this critical uh, integer, integer part of one over alpha, so then uh, k plus one times alpha is uh, definitely uh, strictly greater than one. And the extension problem has a positive answer by the serving lemma with gamma greater than one. And in fact, the extension is unique. So this 
is a result which uh, goes back to Lyons in his original paper in 98. It was not proved with certain lemma, which did not exist yet, but he, he knew already that uh, if you have defined, you, uh, remember, so if you have defined up to level capital N your functions, then all subsequent levels are, are uniquely determined. On the other hand, if you are below N, then the extension problem has a positive answer, but, but okay, by the same lemma with gamma less or equal than one. And moreover, the extension is, is non-unique, okay? So I wrote, it, I wrote already here that the first result is well known, and it was due to Terry Lyons, uh, blah, blah, blah. It says the first 10 levels of a geometric rough path of determine all the higher levels. So the second result was also known in a sense, uh, uh, it was proved by Lyons and Victoire, uh, in, we, again, without using the, the, the same lemma, uh, with a very beautiful proof, uh, but which mentioned the axiom of choice at some point. So this has generated, uh, in my opinion, uh, a big confusion around this. Uh, so in a sense, uh, people think that they need this, the axiom of choice to construct a, a, a rough path. So I don't think that Lyons and Victoire meant, meant this because they did a very general theorem, which okay, it is so general that it needs the axiom of choice. But in the specific example of geometric rough path, they did not need uh, <laughs> the axiom of choice. Okay. Anyway, now we... So we, with, uh, Luca, with this same lemma, we can prove that you construct a continuous extension even. So that means that you can put, uh, um, you can start from your first uh, uh, level, which is usually just, a, uh, sorry, I didn't mention here, a Hel alpha Helder path from zero T to RD. And then there exists a geometric rough path capital X, they, let's say, so math BBX, on top of uh, uh, this uh, path X, and this map is actually uh, continuous, uh, local ellipses in, in natural uh, uh, norms. Okay, so again, you have uniqueness for big uh, levels, but you don't have uniqueness for small levels, and in fact, you can really, okay, uh, understand very precisely this uniqueness. Uh, so, sorry, this non-uniqueness. I, I try to come back to that in a second. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, maybe, what time is it? Okay, we are in almost, almost uh, at the end. So, do you have any questions about this? Yes, please, Frederick. Method, uh, you say with lemma, will be constructive or is it? Uh, yes, yes, it is absolutely. Uh, in the sense that I, I said that uh, uh, there is a, what is it, a dyadic uh, uh, argument. So it, I said also that it is not the limit of uh, Riemann sums, but you have an explicit expression for dyadic times, and then you prove that this can be extended to the whole uh, zero T interval. So it is not, I mean, it is explicit on the dyadic times, is less explicit uh, outside, but it is really constructive. Uh, well, uh, I, I think so, because if you have two linear maps, you take the difference, and this goes just uh, in, in the increments of C gamma uh, held uh, spaces. Yeah. You need, a, a, yes, a, a linear map from uh, the, this space to, uh, to C gamma one. Okay. Well, actually, if you want continuity, it needs also to be continuous. So. Okay, other questions? Now, let me mention here, so this is a bit uh, a jump uh, uh, into uh, hyperspace. Uh, so, in fact, 
I, I, I spoke about geometric rough path because this is the simplest case, uh, in particular at the level of the chain identity. Uh, but in fact, this works uh, on a much uh, more general setting. So uh, to, this can be uh, extended to any commutative, graded, connected, locally finite Hopf algebra. Okay? Um, in fact, uh, the, the crucial chain identity is just replaced by these expressions where the delta prime is the reduced uh, co-product. So uh, just uh, remind you it was uh, this, okay? On the left-hand side, you have delta of x uh, tau, and the right-hand side, you have sum of products of uh, x su and x ut applied to something, and this is uh, here, okay? So this includes, for example, the butcher con kramer hopf algebra uh, and the associated uh, notion of rough branch rough path, uh, which was invented by uh, Massimiliano Gubinelli in 2010. Uh, Quasi-shuffle algebras and quasi-geometric graph path. Uh, see the recent paper by uh, Carlo Bellingeri. The Hopf algebra of Lie group integrators and plenary branch graph path. See the paper by uh, Curry, Bremi, Fard, Monchon, Montecas. There is a, a recently introduced and so far unnamed Hopf algebra in the paper by uh, Pablo Linares and uh, Rick Sott and Marcus Tempelmeyer, so two of the author, authors are, are present. Uh, and uh, so Pablo will give a talk tomorrow about that. Uh, and uh, maybe even, so there is a notion of stochastic semi lemma, which is uh, very interesting, uh, uh, which is due to uh, Coalé, again, a recent paper. There is a, a rough path approach to non-commutative stochastic calculus. Uh, see, for example, um, the uh, Schott and uh, Bellingeri and Gillier. And uh, even uh, more, uh, maybe so, uh, there is uh, another exciting paper by, uh, sorry, donc, uh, François de la Rue and William Salkel. So, uh, I, are you William Salkin? Yes, so nice, nice to meet you. Um, two, uh, so coupled of algebras and uh, a rough path approach to uh, making a Vlasov uh, equation. So, um, yeah, may, and I'm certainly forgetting uh, many uh, other uh, possible applications because uh, rough paths uh, have become uh, uh, quite uh, popular uh, in the last uh, years. Uh, and now these ideas are being applied, okay, I, I would say more and more. And uh, I would like to insist on the fact that if you go back to the statement of the semi lemma, for example, this one or, or the one for gamma, greater than one, in fact, it is not about the rough paths. It is a very general uh, problem, a very general uh, statement, very simple, actually, idea. And rough paths are a way to uh, <laughs> make it uh, effective, so to, to exploit it, okay? So rough paths are a good way, which I'm not uh, really explaining here, to generate the germs uh, a, so remember, in, in my notations, usually a is a function of, of two parameters. Uh, so you have a st and b sut is delta a sut. Okay, so a st is a germ that you want to integrate. Uh, so you want to write. Um, uh, what I wrote before, okay, so. Uh, and then, so you take uh, its delta and, you, and then you apply the, the lambda to, to its delta. Now, the rough path approach uh, allows you to construct a mm, clever uh, choices of, of your germ and then uh, to obtain uh, 
integers, etc. So the point is, how do you prove that the rough path uh, indeed exists and that you have good control on, on them? One approach is the stochastic uh, approach. So for example, you have a brain in motion and you can produce, um, I don't know, the, the Ito rough path, the Stratonovich uh, rough path, uh, etc. Or you, you don't have a brain in motion and then uh, you, you may use uh, this uh, same uh, lemma with gamma less or equal than one. Um, for example, I'm not sure, so Kurush, in your paper, do you, do you construct a, a rough path? Or yeah, for example, so that I think that's, uh, uh, because of course, you, you okay, I didn't explain that, but of course, when you have a smooth uh, um, X here, when X is, is a C1, then the rough path can be constructed uh, rather easily. While all this becomes relevant, uh, so in fact, in the smooth case, you don't need the rough path. You don't need the semi lemma either, probably. Uh, that becomes relevant in the further case. And then, yeah, so. You can use the, the semi lemma, at least for that. Of course, the semi lemma was introduced uh, to solve equations, but I told you, I had to make some choices. Uh, I, I decided that for the moment, I don't treat equations. Fortunately, Ilya has told you a lot about equations this morning. Maybe in the fourth lecture, we'll come back to, to equations if that is necessary. Again, uh, this, uh, there is an earthquake. Um, okay. This is the end of my first lecture. Uh, thanks a lot. Any questions, doubts, comments? Would you mind showing the theorem again? Okay. This one. Yeah. Ah, actually, we started. Uh, we started later. Uh, I was even in advance. Okay. Can you give some intuition of what? the germs would be in the case gamma is less than one? Uh, where, so, so the germ is, is um, so the germ is this. So, uh, um, okay, no, sorry, w w what am I saying? Here you want to, um, so in, in this setting you are not really integrating, so you see I, I don't have I, I just have uh, the, the delta, okay? So, um, yeah. So here, if you want, uh, the, the germ is, is, is this, and uh, you, 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 yeah, so, okay. The germ is really relevant uh, when, when you want to integrate. So for example, when you write uh, an equation, so maybe, but then again, I should uh, mention uh, uh, SDEs. Uh, was not really my, yeah, but that you know, so that, that was not your question. Uh, To what? To 
mean, the, the Riemann sum of the, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, again, so, uh, okay, there is an explicit, uh, this is, I think, what I said to, to Frederick, so there is a, an explicit expression on, on dyadic times, uh, but then it does not become explicit anymore uh, when, when you fill the whole interval by, by continuing. So it's a bit hard to, so uh, you, you can ask uh, Luca who, uh, can explain this uh, very well. I can prepare a, a, a slide uh, on this, but uh, did not seem really. Yeah, thanks. He's the young guy, so he. Yes. Well, it's, does it uh, because in the reconstruction theorem, which is sort of related yeah. to the solar model, yeah. in a similar statement, there's yeah. one uniqueness, but there exists mm -hmm. a continuous one. Does it coincide? Well. Can you show that it kind of coincides in the case uh, in what in the one I just mentioned? Yeah. Uh, okay. That's uh, in fact we have a section on that uh, in the in, in the paper. Uh, okay. The next lecture, so after the coffee break, is about the reconstruction theorem, uh, which which is, a, in a sense, uh, the sewing lemma in higher dimension. So that's imprecise, but uh, gives the idea. And it is always said that uh, uh, in one dimension it coincides with the serial lemma. In fact, it turns out to be true, but uh, not completely. So in fact, the serial lemma is slightly stronger than the, the reconstruction theorem for reasons which uh, we discuss. Uh, so it's morally the same, but in fact, the serial lemma is a bit more clever than the reconstruction theorem. I, okay. This is another detail that we can discuss. Uh,